My name is Holly Hall from AskHollyHall.com. I'm a master astrologer with a background education in psychology and philosophy, past life regression therapy, neuro-linguistic programming, which is a type of psychology, hypnosis therapy, and heart math. I use all of these modalities with my clairvoyancy to work with my clients. Since I was young, I've always been understanding and trying to reevaluate what is the meaning of man? What is the meaning of life? Born as a Roman Catholic to two flower children who one was quite psychic. And I realized I came from a generation of psychics. By the time I was 20, my scientific mind decided it was agnostic and that energy and science was God, so-called energy. When I was in my mid to early 20s, a friend of mine loaned me a book called um, Learning Astrology 101. Of course, as a scientist, a scientific mind, I had to take a look at this before I defied it and considered it to quote-unquote woo-woo. I was hooked. It was as if I was remembering something I had just slightly forgotten. The language came back to me as fast as a speed of lightning. I could not put the book down, and I could not finish it fast enough. The science, the math, the glyphs, the hieroglyphics, everything came to life for me. My clairvoyancy and my ability to see souls on a deep level became even stronger. By now, I have developed a science, psychological, and clairvoyant way of looking at people's souls. When people ask me, what do you do, Holly, for a living? I say, I discover the meaning of life while I discover the meaning of others and coach them on that journey. I hope that you will enjoy the show and that it helps elevate you during your journey as well. Namaste. What is the meaning of God? There was a time when that word made me feel I was the most important child in the world, loved, cared for, and safe. And then there was a time when it made me shudder. It was so uncomfortable. It was like nails on a chalkboard. And now I have to say I am somewhere in between but more towards the feeling of love. So what is God? According to the book 101 Answers from the Universe, which was written by myself in the tail end of 2019, my first few questions to the universe, as this entire book was downloaded, was... Who is God? What is God? Backstory. The reason I wrote this book is I have been reading for clients for several, several, several years, a couple decades. And since I questioned the meaning of life since I was a child, and somehow I was able to see the meaning of someone's life, their soul, the depth of who they are. And the downloads that I would get while I was working with a client, I found myself asking questions and getting the answers. And so number one, is there a God? There's a short answer and a long answer, of course. (laughs) So the First question is, is God source the creator? And it's source versus God. God versus universal consciousness. And then we will cover in multitude of topics that are both personal and global. And the answer was no. Of course, I was shocked. And then, not really. What am I receiving answers from? The universal mind. 
Is this God? Yes and no. So God is an energy source and many beings that hold this energy source are the creators. They are the creators within the source. You are a creator. An animal is a creator. Air is a creator. Water is a creator. Flowers are creators. And this is what's called collective source. You belong to the collective. Everything belongs to the collective source. Everyone and everything. Always, always. So then I question, who am I speaking with then? You are getting answers from the collective consciousness. So the energy field that holds all the knowledge. I was receiving data like a computer receives data from the internet. You receive the same data like a computer receives data from an internet. But I can also download or input information into that computer with software, disks, etc. That computer is not responsible for what I put into it. It could be corrupt. It could have conflict with other programs. It could create a faulty computer. It could destroy my computer. There are those possibilities. It is because I input that, possibly without researching, knowing, accidentally not knowing what could happen. And this is the same kind of data that, for instance, programmers and even web designers can do the same thing. So the another question was, and this was interesting because, of course, born Roman Catholic, God is a he. Jesus is a he. So who is, is, is he gender? Does he have a gender? He is non-gender as well as source, unified field, source, God is nothing. So that was what I found interesting, that God is nothing. It is a higher power, but it is nothing. And what is the meaning of nothing? No thing. Space. Air. Emptiness. So source is space. Space is where source lives. God or the God energy is what is the source is a conduit for that energy. So since source is space and space is in everything as everything is argumentally 99.99% emptiness. That is where God and source resides. That's where the universal intelligence lives. That's where it speaks through you and you have access to this. So that means God and source is everywhere. So let me try to explain this. So space fills everything. Therefore, God, source, intelligence, universal consciousness is 99.99% of everything, including you, which is also God, source, universal mind. Okay, try to keep up. I know it's hard. It's hard. Even I was like, you know, boggled. We do not mean to sound redundant. We are just trying to make it clear so that you understand what is being said. The problem is that many humans, and only humans, only humans do this. Only humans do this. Only humans do a lot of things, which I will talk about in other episodes. Only humans drink milk from another animal. There are exceptions. We have seen document proof of a puppy feeding kittens who had lost their mother. However, 
after weaning off and no longer needing the mother's milk, only humans continue to drink another animal's milk. In fact, only humans turn that product, which is their creative right to do so, into other products, even molecular molecular and chemically altering and possibly destroying the original component, the original energy. When man manipulates the original source of energy, it is dangerous. Only man has a consciousness where they feel guilt or remorse, regret. Animals do feel emotions, but not the tertiary emotions. Only man takes more than they need. Nature does not take more than it needs. The problem is that many humans and only humans do this. They try to fill in that space in which they think they can control. We can fill in the space with distractions, hobbies. We can fill it in negative ways. We can fill it in positive ways. And it seems to be instinctual on a subconscious level that many humans try to fill this void of emptiness. It's why meditation is to empty the mind so that that space can be occupied by God's source, by energy source, by Allah, by, by Jesus, by higher consciousness, angels, guides. It really doesn't care what you call it. The energy has no form and has no name, has no label. It does not require a label unto itself. We require it to have a label, a distinction. And that's ego. And so the ego tries to fill in these holes, fill in this space, or, and, or, in actuality, they're escaping the emptiness. And we do this in many ways. We try to find another form that will accommodate it. Uh, in this day and age, it, it's actually quite an epidemic. We, do, we can do this through drugs, alcohol, working too hard, trying to achieve unattainable goals, never being satisfied. We can bring in technology, gaming, eating, we can accomplish these through distractions with purchasing, buying, selling, the list goes on. But in actuality, those holes, the space is never really filled. The emptiness never, never remains filled for too long. It will keep trying to revert back to emptiness. So then we get stuck in this duality of opposition, full Empty, light, dark, heavy, light. Thinking of nothing, consumed with the thoughts of everything. In this duality, while we are neither here nor there, because we are always osculating back and forth, this is where we feel discomfort. This is where we feel anxiety. This is where we have a sense that we are lost, that we don't know what our purpose is, our mission. Why are we here? So God's source, universal mind, is an intelligence. It's the highest intelligence. It's the intelligence that makes everything function. It's the intelligence that allows you to breathe, the plants to grow, the sun to shine, the plants to move in a systematic manner. It creates patterns providing you with our, with your earth. So they're talking, right, to me. And it lets us be what we want ourselves to be. And what we want ourselves to be is completely up to ourselves. 
it's also up to ourselves what energy we want to pull in. Collectively, we can raise consciousness by individually only attracting certain energies. The earth is is pulsing. There's a pulse in the earth. There is a magnetic field around the earth. And that energy is constantly monitoring itself by its vibration. A low vibration or higher vibration. The higher the vibration is, which means the more of the collective is reaching, even just reaching for a higher vibration, a higher love, a higher being, allows the rest of the group, the collective, to rise above as well. The more negativity, the more lowering of the energy, the the more difficult it is to, to rise, to raise the energy and the easier it is to drag down those of higher vibrations. And then the next query or the next question that I asked the universe was, is God universal mind, a being? And the answer was, as the universe is a duality in nature, and in this duality there are oppositions, of course it answered in this way. Yes, it is a being, and no, it is not. So basically what is meant by this is that the energy itself is not a being, but it becomes a being when it is in form, especially in a human-type form with a consciousness and a subconsciousness. Just as a side note, understand that Everything has consciousness, only human type beings and animals, some animals have a subconsciousness. And then there was the idea that people would have a hard time understanding that a God source energy is not a being. And what I was given is that the prophets, many prophets, Muhammad, Buddha, Jesus, Allah, Krishna, you know, many prophets have come and there has been documentation of the teachings of these prophets and that we are attached to our concept, belief or disbelief of those prophets. We gravitate culturally to specific beings that came to our culture, we divide this consciousness. As human beings, we divide this consciousness by taking ownership of it. Meaning that my culture had a a prophet or a being that gave us the teachings that we follow religiously or culturally for decades, centuries, thousands of years. And we take ownership of that and therefore ours is the way. We 
what is what is not an actuality or not a reality is that every single culture or place in history had their deities, had their teachers and their masters. And it's important to understand that each one came from the same source. They are one in the same And so for humans to subjectify it by claiming it to be the only way to the truth is a lie that the ego lives and breathes and sustains itself with this. And as you know, it is one of the main sources of anger, possessions, war, terrorizing one another, judging, and separating yourselves from that consciousness. And so I'm going to to end it at that. And that is basically the first, almost the first 12 questions answered in the book, 101 Answers from the Universe, which you can get from Amazon. Even though you're hearing me speak of this now, having the book, many people enjoy because they often refer back to the understanding and the teachings, especially as many end up highlighting or marking up the book to help them on their journey, as well as the pleasure of being able to open up the book at any given time in any given place in the book in which it can give you a message. Until next time, this is Holly Hall at AskHollyHall.com. And in the next episode of Soul Ascensions, we will talk about where do our loved ones go? And more about this God-like, source-like, universal consciousness and understanding our relationship to this consciousness and its relationship to us. Namaste.